Hi everyone and welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. On today's Your Retro Repair, we have a Pooley Issue 2 Spectrum 48K that was sent to me by a member of one of the ZX Spectrum Facebook groups. As you can see, based on this picture, something is definitely up, so let's take a look at the board. I was expecting to see the TR6 transistor patch over the CPU, but it wasn't there. Instead, TR6 had been placed down here directly to the PCB. I checked the schematics for an Issue 3 board, and it seemed to be hooked up right, so I decided not to change anything there. Before powering, I did want to inspect the rest of the board, and I can see that some of the work that's been done needs touching up a little bit. For example, this joint isn't made on the top side of the PCB, and there were a few slightly bodged uh, dry solder joints like this one that needed tidying up. There were a few examples of these joints not being made on the top side of the PCB, so I went round and I removed all of those capacitors, finding that some were the wrong value as well, so it's definitely a good thing that I checked it out before turning it on. Somebody in the past had made this DC-DC mod as well. It seems to be halfway towards the kind of mod I would do on an Issue 3 board, but I decided to remove it in the end, as you'll see later, and go back to a normal Issue 2 service modification. Let's get on to these two transistors. I'm going to remove this solder and remove the transistors entirely, then check out the condition of the pads underneath, and then refit with some brand new ones. While that's happening, here's my first tip to avoid this happening in the future. You must make sure that you have a fine tip that looks shiny and nicely tinned. If your tip becomes oxidised and refuses to tin, then it either needs a real good clean with some tip tinner, or you need to just remove it and put a new one on. Make sure that while you're working, you have some solder wool, and regularly dip the tip into there to keep it clean. And of course, when you finish soldering, Make sure you apply some solder to the tip to keep it tinned. I find that giving it one last dip in the solder wool spreads the solder around nicely and then the soldering iron is good to go the next time you fire it up. That's those transistors removed and cleaned up. Now I'm chopping out the DC-DC modification. This might not be the best thing to do, but I've not seen this mod on an issue 2 board and because it's a repair job, I want to keep it familiar so I'm not taking any chances. Always tidy up with some solder wick after removing a component. And now it's time to put in our replacement transistors, being careful that they go in the right way round. As well as these, I need to put in a new BA157 diode to revert back to the standard power circuit after I clipped out that DC-DC mod. With all this done, I powered it up and I got a very similar screen to the one we saw at the start of the video, so I think it's time to start removing all of these extra socketed chips to revert the board back to a 16k spectrum, just to remove those possibilities. And here's the result. It still doesn't look good, but it looks a little bit more familiar. It could be a RAM failure. So let's check the voltages. This is the 12 volt uh, supply, and it was about 9.5 and climbing, so I unplugged it. Uh, I wanted to check the minus 5 volts, and that was about minus 4.6, and the 5 volts was 4.4. So not a million miles away, but it's definitely wrong. Here's that broken screen again. Now, rather amazingly, I was able to run the Retrolium Smart Card Diagnostic ROM. And the reason I'm saying this is amazing is that when I plugged in my bench power supply, the 9 volt feed was pulled down to 6 volt, so something was definitely badly shorting out. The Smart Card ROM told me to replace these two lower memory ICs, so I've removed those and I'm popping in some sockets. And while I'm soldering these in place, Let's find out what the owner of this board's first experience with the ZX Spectrum was. He tells me when he was 8, he got a plus 2, the grey one, in the James Bond 007 pack. He used that until he was 14 and loved it. And question 2, as always, what was your favourite game? In this case, it was Arkanoid. So I think we'll be playing Arkanoid on this when it's up and running again. Here's our diagnostic ROM running again. And as you can see, it's passing all of the memory tests with flying colours. The voltages are back to normal, and the screen, although it looks a bit funny, that's just because of my HDMI capture, so it is actually sorted. The last thing I wanted to do, because I really don't like how hot the Issue 2s run, is replace the voltage regulator with the Traco TSR12450. This switching regulator doesn't run hot, and it means you can remove the heatsink. Finally, I desocketed the ULA and added a heatsink there to hopefully keep this thing running for a long time. Which brings us to the final question, what's the story behind this board? 
Well, the plan is to put it into this really bling looking silver and white spectrum case with a white keyboard to go with it. I can't wait to see that up and running. But for now, let's just play some Arkanoid to test that it's definitely working correctly. Thanks for watching, and if you have any repair work, get in touch, I'll be happy to feature it. Thank you.